Hi, my name is April Wintermoyer. I have the right at home in West Virginia in the northern part. That would be Morgantown, West Virginia and Wheeling, West Virginia. Well, right before um, I got involved with Right at Home, I was working at the major tertiary care facility in my area. I'd been there for 26 years in a variety of capacities. Uh, my original training was as a medical assistant. So I had worked in a pediatrician's office. I'd done a variety of things. Um, when I went to the hospital, I came in as more administrative staff. Um, over time, um, so I was a secretary. I uh, ended up being the assistant to the administrative director for cardiac and diagnostic services, so policies, budgets, um, all that kind of people management stuff. Did some EKGs when there was a, a need, because I could. Uh, I really liked that, but then there was an opportunity to move to IT. So I worked in IT for the last 15 years and um, did programming for our patient information system. You know, the hospital world has changed a lot in the last 20 years. Um, this is going on my 12th year with Right at Home. So, you know, roll back 20 years and it was really different in the hospital setting. Um, there was a time that I truly believed and I embraced full-heartedly. The patient is the first priority in everything we do. The model changed. It's still about the patient. Everybody still cares, but it's also about the bottom line. And it has to be, right? You have to make a buck. But I felt like things had really changed and I didn't feel the same as I did about working in a large healthcare place. Um, it's a great place, it's grown tons. It does lots and lots of good for the community, but it changed for me. So I had a friend who was a pharmacist who also worked there and um, we used to joke about doing something else and coffee shop, bakery, you know, whatever. And um, she was at a doctor's office one day and found a Fortune 500 magazine or something, one of those magazines that talks about franchises. Um, I was married, my stepson, Ryan, I don't know if you met Ryan, Ryan was little. Um, I had that secondary income and I could try to make a change. So we ordered materials from RFPs from about five different places. And um, actually I, I fell in love with Right at Home. I liked the missions, I liked the values, I liked what I felt the company stood for. Um, when I came to Omaha for Discovery Day, I was done. I wasn't gonna do anything else. If I was gonna leave and I was gonna make that leap, this was going to be my chance to mean the patient was the first priority in everything we do. I know that's not our logo, but that was what I was looking for. You know, a lot of people have changed since then, but I think the feeling is still the same. You know, there was a lot of experience that the people who worked there brought with them. They had all worked in home care or in health care in some capacity. They had a passion. Um, there was an integrity about the way they spoke about the business and about clients and about how we take care of things. Um, like I said, I, I knew when we were done, Alan was our last visit of the day. So back in the day, you still got to meet with Alan. And um, yeah, I was just done. You know, Alan is a very genuine person. Uh, I think his intentions were as pure as they could possibly be to start this company. And I think it shows, and I think it's a trickle down. I think everybody that I have met, you know, I told him there's always a few 
people in the business that you know you're not so crazy about. Um, but almost every franchisee I meet is in it for the right reasons. They're in here to make a difference. We're doing good. We're doing good things for good people, and we're keeping people at home. You know, my parents are getting to that age. I would like them to be able to be in their home as long as they possibly can. You know, and that's one of the things we use, is keeping parents and grandparents in their home, right at home, right where they belong. Um, so what I was hoping to accomplish when I came to meet right at home was to have that opportunity to make people a first priority. Um, to make a difference in the world, for me to be more fulfilled. My, I don't know whether you want to drag my personal life into it, but, um, you know, we moved from Ohio to West Virginia to get out of a bad relationship. Uh, my mom and I had a brother and a sister at that time, and we moved in with my grandma. My grandmother was... Um, my first grade school teacher. We rode back and forth to school together. She taught me to write my name by writing hers, which was humongous. I'll just leave it there. Um, she had a lot of middle names. But my grandma was, you know, super creative, all the bulletin boards, you know, first grade school teacher, right? They've got it going on. They're smart. They know how to engage people. Um, but then Grandma had a fall and hit her head, and she came down with a dementia. You know, all the signs today, it looks like it would have been Alzheimer's, but, you know, we didn't know then. And she began to deteriorate and kind of forgot people and things and was a danger to herself. And Mom remarried, and she came to live with us, and she turned into this person who wandered in the yard and picked up sticks. Um, sometimes she'd be naked in the yard picking up sticks. She'd be down on the road uh, pick, playing in traffic, literally. Um, tried to set the house on fire, certainly not intentionally, but it happened. Um, you know, I was in my early teens when Grandma died and it was, there wasn't any help. You know, mom was newly married and just about broke the family up because it was a lot, it was a lot to handle. And they'd had a new baby and it was a lot, it was just a lot. And then as I um, got older, you know, I would see friends from church in their decline and there still really wasn't anybody who did what we do. Um, private caregivers, under the table caregivers, all the horror stories everything we know and every reason we do everything that we do to background check and train our caregivers. You know, theft, lying, stealing the car and being gone for days. I mean, crazy stuff. Um, you know, this was a chance again to make a difference, right? To do something right, to make that kind of a situation better. Um, we go way above and beyond um, for training our caregivers, the background checks that we do. Um, we're starting a CNA program. Um, I have a personal philosophy. It's not grammatically correct, but it's from my heart. It's called doing the best, most right thing. And that's my goal. I wanna do the best, most right thing for the people that work for me, for the people that we take care of, and try to make a difference. You know, I think it's the same fear that creeps in when things go amok, because things will go amok. I just lost, lost three 24-7 clients. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of time. You know, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Do I know enough? Can I make this work? Mm, I don't know the answers to those questions. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not any of those things. Um, but I know I have support. Um, 
I can call my business coach, I can call the office, I can get guidance, I can get answers. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much was my, my biggest fear. Could I really do it? I can look, my, look at myself in the mirror every day and know that I'm doing good for good people and that I don't cheat anybody and I do a good job and life is good. Yeah, in the business, in the beginning, in the business, I was in the field, I was everywhere. I was marketing, I was caregiving, I was feeding, I was toileting, I was everywhere. Um, over time, you begin to find people that you can put in place who know, who know people, and who love people enough to care. And I think the trick is, and has been for me, is finding the people who care as much as I do. And I think that's hard, but it's definitely doable. Um, they're gonna manage your schedule. They're gonna deal with your caregivers. It's a different group of people. They have to have a heart. They have to love what they're doing. Um, they have to want to feel like they're making a difference, too. And they want you to know, and they want to know that you know, right? So it can be a cookie, <laughs> you know? But they want to know that you know. Um, it, it is hard to find good caregivers. It's, I think one of the things that's going to help us moving forward at this point, um, and I'll say that I probably have not done any direct caregiving for a year and a half. Um, and that was by choice. We had a couple and he became very ill and, um, passed away about a year ago, actually. And it was a very sudden onset and a very difficult case to staff. Let's just say he was a difficult personality. Um, so I went. I was the best dressed caregiver at Mon General Hospital because I was dressed to go to a wedding reception but I went. Um, I would recommend that you never be afraid to go out and show your staff who you are and how much you care. You certainly can't do your job if that's all that you do. But every now and again, when you find yourself out in that place, you have street cred, right? I had caregivers come back and say, you know what, she's really pretty good. She knows what she's doing. Did you see how she handled him? Because he was difficult, remember? You want to get to the place where you can run your business and find those people to care for your people, but you don't want to lose touch. So, in this place where you're trying to make a differentiation between yourself and the other players in the field that are doing what you do, and people look at you like glorified babysitters because they think that's what you are, um, you struggle to be different. So, the building that I rent in is not the cheapest place in town. But then when you start adding up everything you have to pay to be someplace on your own, you know, it really all kind of levels out. But it was gonna more than double my rent. Um, but I wanted to start a program. Um, we're now gonna to apply to do CNA licensure for our caregivers. But before then, I was just trying to find a place and a space that I could have 
the bed, the potty chair, you know, which I hate when people call it that, but when I say bedside commode, nobody knows what I'm talking about. The bedside commode, the, you know, uh, some depends, um, slide boards, wheelchairs, walkers, a Hoyer lift. I have all that. And I wanted a space that I could have all that. I knew I wanted to come here and I wanted to do, a, do skilled. I knew I wanted to do my dementia aware program that we've been working on. Um, so I needed that space. All of those things that I wanted to do and that I kind of had in my goals package that I wanted to do, um, I could call my team and talk to them about it. You know, oh, hey, April, that's a really great idea, but mm, what about, you know, and kind of, um, it's almost like having your own little mastermind group. If they're going to uh, listen to you, help find the information that you need to make an intelligent decision, or we just bought a wheelchair van. Have you talked to Sandra Bullock about this, she's doing some transportation. How about this, how about that? You know, they have the resources. Their view is the 5,000 foot view. You know, you guys can see other people and their businesses and how they're doing things that I don't have. So even though you're not doing it, it's like you still have your finger on the experts. You can get me to the right people to get me the information that I need to make an intelligent decision. That, that team is the most important thing to me right now, you know. Um, and each program, you know, has its, its group of experts that somebody can talk to you about, whether it's the cognitive support or the compassionate touch or, you know, any of the other programs that we can run and get involved in. There's always somebody who knows or somebody who knows somebody who knows. Um, I don't need to make every one of those mistakes again by myself. From time to time, I get the opportunity for somebody to call me and ask me if they think, uh, what I think about the business, um, if I would do it again. And they usually ask me what I would do differently. And that's a tough one because I think everything I've done in my life has brought me to this place, right? Um, it's an interesting set of background and circumstances. But I think the key is not being afraid to care and to get involved and do it because you wanna do it, not because you're looking to make a million bucks. Yeah, you can make a nice living, and that's great. We all need to do that, that's why we're here. Running a business, I wouldn't own a business if I didn't need to make money, but, um, you know, it's, it's having those other reasons, especially in the beginning, when you're the one that's on call, and you're the one that's going out and toileting somebody and changing an adult diaper. Um, that's not always pleasant. You know, but you get to make that difference. You build relationships with people that are just incredible. Um, you know, I always say we have the best clients. Oh, there's a little French bread person in there every now and again, you know, crusty on the outside, but soft and warm on the inside. Um, but by and large, there are people who know they want to be at home and have somebody help them stay there and they're grateful to have them do that. Do differently. You know, I think it might have been nice to have <laughs> more money, you know, um, to be able to pay myself from the get-go, um, to have the car, to have, you know, all those things, to not have to worry as much. Um, you know, you, you, there's always something you didn't think about. 
So maybe my advice to someone would, would be to um, cut yourself a little slack there. Have a little extra in the pocket. Um, there's always something more you're going to want to do.